there, you might know me from a little YouTube channel called Linus Tech Tips. Thanks to Plex for inviting me to be part of Plex Pro Week. I've been using Plex for over five years now, and I'm excited to drop some knowledge on you nerds out there. Let's talk about hardware encoding. You've set up your server, and things have been going great so far. But your penchant for almighty high resolution remuxes is getting the best of you, and now you have a hard drive full of only 10 movies that are basically unstreamable for your friends and family with slow internet. So they go, they select a lower resolution to stream and suddenly they're getting that yellow plex circle of doom. See the problem is that your server hardware is struggling to transcode your videos quickly enough for them to watch, which is why you have smartly decided to take advantage of dun, 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 dun. Hardware acceleration. What's hardware acceleration? Well, I'm glad you asked. Under normal circumstances, your CPU can do a great job of performing pretty much any kind of computing operation, including running the AI opponents in your favorite games, crunching numbers in Excel, or transforming heavy video files into lighter, more manageable ones. It's really versatile. You can think of it kind of like a passenger car that can scoot around to any destination you want. And like a CPU, a passenger car isn't necessarily the best tool for every job. Let's say all of a sudden we have many, many people who all want to reach the same destination, video encoding square. Suddenly, we might be better off laying down some railway tracks to help transport more of them at a time. Well, that's kind of like a hardware encoder. It's a portion of your processor's hardware that is way more efficient to one destination, but pretty much useless for going anywhere else, like say, Excel Central Station. There are many different kinds of hardware accelerators, but the two big ones that Plex makes use of are NVIDIA's NVENC and Intel's QuickSync, which are both hardware video encoders. And you'll find these on the majority of new products from both of these companies. If you wanna double check though, you can check out the links in the description. To show you just how much of a difference hardware acceleration can make, we built up a Plex server that's made out of the most common hardware from the Steam hardware survey. A six core CPU that runs in the mid three gigahertz range, like an Intel 96, 600K. And for our GPU, we've got a GTX 1060. We're going to see how many streams we can transcode at the same time before we run into issues. We're also going to compare the performance of Intel's QuickSync versus NVIDIA NVENC so you can get an idea of whether you need a dedicated GPU for your server. Let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is get some media files to play. We'll be using our recent Why Do We Have 80 Staff video. We also need to check our settings, making sure that we have hardware acceleration disabled. Now let's go ahead and configure these high bitrate videos to convert to a mobile-friendly 720p high. Oh my poor CPU. And he's dead, Jim. 100% utilization with one stream. That's rough. Now what happens when we start another one? Jeepers creepers. Ah, we stay at 100% usage, but the quality of our transcoding, yeah, that's probably going down. Will we get a third one? Uh, ooh, huh, heavens no. <laughs> I didn't have high hopes. Now let's go ahead and fix that by enabling hardware acceleration. I suspect that our server is gonna have a little fit with us turning on hardware acceleration midstream. So we're just gonna use Plex Dash, which is their monitoring app, to go ahead and say, uh, hey, you need to actually stop now. <laughs> Now, let's give this another shot with hardware acceleration enabled. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Expecting this to be better. And now, with hardware encoding, we are actually running out of windows here. Hold on a second. Now, with hardware acceleration, we have got, so far, five of these transcoded streams running, and, okay, usage is looking pretty heavy over here, but five is a lot better than two. And even better than five is seven. Not bad, hey? At this point, you're basically running a, oh, oh, that one buffered. That one buffered. Oh, that one buffered. Okay, five. Five is still better than two. <laughs> but what if we remove our NVIDIA GPU? With only our onboard Intel graphics, we are still managing four of our 720p high transcodes. Not too bad. You might not need a GPU after all. Or at least like one on a card. 
One thing to consider is that at a given bitrate, hardware acceleration will output results that typically look worse than files encoded through software. This is most noticeable at lower bit rates, but as the bit rates become higher, this difference in picture quality becomes smaller, assuming of course that you have the hardware to keep up with the demand. Because you know what's way more noticeable than a less than perfect frame of video? It's the... But there are alternatives. If you don't have access to hardware acceleration, for example, a good idea is to make sure to optimize your media ahead of time. So if you know you'll be watching something on your phone or on your smart TV, you can use Plex's optimize feature, which allows you to create a high quality encode of the video that's in the best format and file size for your TV or your mobile device, allowing you to direct stream that file, reducing the computational burden on your server. So remember, if you want friends, Make sure you have the hardware to back it up or that you put in the work ahead of time. Thanks Plex for inviting us to take part in Plex Pro Week and thank you for watching. Make sure to keep checking out Plex's YouTube for more great Plex content.